and this is the overview of the paper two so in paper two the main subjects which are covered are pharmaceutics and therapeutics okay so pharmaceutics it consists of the 30 percent weightage okay and therapeutics consists of around uh, 60 to 70 percent weightage but two it consists of the two main components one is the pharmaceutics and therapeutics okay so pharmaceutics consists of 30 percent weightage 30 to 40 percent and therapeutics consists of 60 to uh, 70 percent weightage okay so in pharmaceutics uh, the main thing that they ask uh, from pharmaceutics is biopharmaceutics so biopharmaceutics plays a major role okay so in pharmaceutics overall you will get around 30 or up to 40 mcqs in your paper two but out of this 40 mcqs around 20 mcqs will be from biopharmaceutics okay so biopharmaceutics plays a major role and then the core pharmaceutics part that is um, uh, the pharmaceutical technology like the preparation of the tablets capsules syrups suspensions emulsions so all, yeah yeah all these subjects will have to pass separately, sir, in chemistry or uh, in physiology, sir. Yeah, Kapil. Yeah, uh, I will. I will explain that part as well. Like, as you guys have seen that in first paper, that is in paper one, there are two main components: that is uh, chemistry and uh, physiology and pharmacology. Okay. So in order to pass the paper one. In order to pass the paper one, the overall paper one, so the overall score should be 50. That is, you need to score 50 uh, correct MCQs. Okay. And the second condition is from chemistry part, you need to get 50%. Okay. So 50% from chemistry and 50% from pharmacology and physiology part. Okay. So that is, if you get 30 MCQs in your uh, CAPS exam from chemistry, so out of 30, you need to get 15%, that is 50%. It, it means that 15 MCQs uh, should correct should be the correct, uh, sh should get corrected from chemistry. And in physiology and pharmacology, you will get around 70 MCQs. And out of 70, you need to score 35, okay? And overall score should go up to 50, okay? So, it is one of the challenging tasks in the CAPS exam. It means that you need to focus on all the components or all the domains. Okay? Like say, for example, if uh, some of you might be interested or you can, uh, you have a very good knowledge in pharmacology. And if you have, even if you have scored all the 70 MCQs from pharmacology, if you have scored everything is correct, correct MCQs and if you have scored only one or two from chemistry part, okay, then you may not pass the exam. Okay, so at least you need to score 50%. Like in case if there are 30 MCQs from chemistry, try to score 15 MCQs from chemistry. Okay, and the same goes with the physiology and pharmacology. If there are 70 MCQs, you must score 35 out of it. Okay, so this is one of the challenging thing in CAPS exam, but don't worry, everyone that they uh, took the exam, they said that uh, they they will get most of the questions that uh, what we teach and all the questions from the mock test, okay? So you need not to worry much about uh, this part, okay? But overall, you need to get 50% and 50% in each domain, that is in chemistry as well as physiology and pharmacology. And the same thing, <laughs> yep. Physiology and pharmacology include in one part, sir. Yeah, yeah, physiology and pharmacology they consider it as one component. Okay, so it is considered as one uh, single component, whereas chemistry is considered as a separate component or a separate domain. Okay, so chemistry is a separate domain and physiology, pharmacology both together as a separate domain. Okay, so it means that you need to score fifty percent in physiology and pharmacology. Okay, so it doesn't matter like in physiology if you uh, if you can't able to score but in pharmacology you have scored all correct answers still you will pass because 
it is considered as a separate domain that is both the physiology and pharmacology are included in a separate domain or a separate component okay so from that component you need to score 50 percent okay even in the chemistry like uh, here you can see in this slide in the chemistry you you may get the questions from organic chemistry from medicinal chemistry from drug metabolism from stereochemistry and also some miscellaneous topics in chemistry so here it doesn't mean that you need to score like in case if there are uh, six questions from medicinal chemistry okay and six questions from uh, stereochemistry and six questions from organic chemistry okay so here again you need not to score three out of six in medicinal chemistry or three out of six in uh, stereochemistry or three out of six in organic chemistry and so on okay so uh, again they won't uh, assess on those individual components okay overall chemistry okay like overall chemistry if you can score up to 50 percent that is fine okay so you are considered as pass okay okay thank you sir okay yeah. thanks kapil the same thing goes with uh, paper two as well so in paper two you have got um rsl can you please make it in the full slide full slide okay yeah. so the same thing goes with paper two as well so in paper two you have got pharmaceutics and therapeutics part okay so in pharmaceutics you need to score 50 percent okay and in therapeutics part you need to score 50 percent so again in pharmaceutics they will divide the pharmaceutics part into pharmaceutical technology okay like uh, four questions or five questions or up to six questions you may uh, expect from pharmaceutical technology that is uh, related to tablets capsules syrups suspensions emulsions and so on okay so core pharmaceutical technology questions will be only five questions or six questions or hardly a, they may ask up to eight questions okay and then the next important one in pharmaceutics is the calculations so calculations part it plays a major role in pharmaceutics okay so you can uh, expect around 12 to 15 questions 15 calculations in paper 2 okay and all these calculations they are the part of pharmaceutics or uh, the pharma uh, they are they they form the or uh, they are uh, assessed under pharmaceutics okay and then the important one is the biopharmaceutics okay so from biopharmaceutics again you can expect our uh, around uh, 15 to 20 questions and this is the main part which plays a major role in pharmaceutics so most of the times the candidates they may not get much questions from uh, this part that is from pharmaceutical technology hardly sometimes uh, like recently those who took the exam they told me that they have got uh, two questions or three questions related to this tablets capsules and so on okay that is from pharmaceutical technology but rest of the questions are from biopharmaceutics okay so biopharmaceutics it plays a major role in paper two so you may expect around 15 questions or sometimes up to 20 questions okay and then the other parts in under pharmaceuticals are like they may ask about microbiology as well as the sterilization techniques the different sterilization techniques okay but hardly around two questions or four questions will be covered from this part okay and uh, the last part will be the immunology part like they will ask you about the uh, antibodies which are present uh, in our body okay the different immunoglobulins and they may ask other uh, questions related to the vaccine okay or some uh, questions related to the autoimmune disorders okay so all these parts uh, like pharmaceutical technology calculations biopharmaceutics microbiology and immunology all together it will be covered under pharmaceutics okay and from this pharmaceutics part from this, this pharmaceutics component you need to score 50 percent okay so it doesn't matter like in case if you score all the 15 mcqs related to the biopharmaceutics okay and if you can't able to score the other things okay still you will pass the exam okay but pharmaceutical calculations plays a major role okay 
So you you will get around uh, as I told you that 12 to 15 uh, MCQs will be on the calculations. So sometimes we, we can't rely only on the biopharmaceutics. So because sometimes they may ask some different questions, okay, and also they may try to twist in biopharmaceutics much. So pharmaceutical calculations is the main part that helps you to clear the pharmaceutics component. Okay, so pharmaceutical calculations and biopharmaceutics. So these two are the main parts under pharmaceutics. And then the last one in paper two is the therapeutics. So therapeutics plays a major role in paper two. So all the remaining questions, like 60 to 70 percent of the questions, will be from therapeutics. So in therapeutics, you will be uh, having different type of the questions. Like it is nothing but the application of the pharmacology, the knowledge that what you have studied in pharmacology. But uh, here in therapeutics, they won't ask you the direct questions. Okay, so they will uh, ask indirect questions. Okay, and uh, in order to answer the questions, it really takes a long time. Okay, so time management is much important in paper two. Okay, rather than in paper one. Okay, because most of the questions they won't be straightforward questions. So you need to think about uh, the options that which option would be the correct one. So in therapeutics, you may be asked about uh, the drug indications, the side effects, the doses, as well as the interactions. So interactions plays a major role, uh, the drug interactions. And sometimes they may ask about the herbal drugs, uh, like one or two questions. But nowadays, they are not asking much questions from the herbal drugs from the herbal products okay but anyhow uh, during the lectures so just in one hour we uh, i will briefly go through the herbal uh, med medications as well okay so this is the overall pattern and even in paper two as well at the end you will be uh, getting one case scenario so at least there will be one case scenario followed by five mcqs so you need to read the case scenario and you need to answer the five MCQs and there won't be any sort of negative markings either in paper one or in paper two. Okay. And also you need to prepare some, you need to uh, know about some essential drugs. So I will give you, we will give you the uh, drug list uh, for you to prepare as well. So the drugs which uh, contain the sulfur, the drugs which leads to cause the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, CHIAD, so the drugs which causes the nephrotoxicity, hepatotoxicity, and the drugs which are contraindicated in pregnancy, and so on. Okay, so all these uh, things that uh, it will be covered in your handouts as well as in the lectures as well. Okay.